Afternoon Adventures. Got something of a different video today, kind of off the cuff. Uh, because I've been hearing a lot of people in person and online and on in, in videos talking about the Blade Singer and talking about a particular feature of the Blade Singer that they feel is particularly weak. If you read the title of the video, you know what I'm talking about already. It's the level 10 Song of Defense feature. And I can't say I agree with those people. Um, I think it's a good feature, and I'm going to explain why. One of the most prominent complaints I see about the Blade Singer is that they don't have enough HP to stand on the front line next to your fighters and your paladins. And I don't think that's strictly true. The difference between HP for someone with a D6 hit die, which people love to hate on the D6 hit die, and a D10 hit die is only two per level if you're using the average values. If you're rolling, things can get a little different, but if you're rolling, the bard can end up with more than the barbarian anyway. It's all random, so we're going to use average values for this video uh, because that's how we play in Adventures League, and that's how I think a lot of groups probably play. In my experience, that's been the case, and I just think it's the better way to do it anyway. So we're going to use the average values. So at level 10, when you get Song of Defense, a Blade Singer with, let's say, 14 Constitution has 62 HP. And a fighter, paladin, or ranger with 14 constitution has 84 HP, meaning that they are about 22 hit points ahead of the blade singer, meaning they'll probably take another one or two hits, maybe three, depending on the circumstances, before uh, they reach zero. Now, of course, as you level up, that gap is going to slowly widen a little bit because that D10 hit die gives those other classes a couple more hit points, two, two more hit points than the Blade Singer gets per level. So at level 20, we're looking at 122 HP for the Blade Singer and 164 for the Fighter Paladin Ranger. Enter Song of Defense. So when the Blade Singer takes some damage, they can use Song of Defense to spend a spell slot and reduce that damage by five times the spell's level. Now, if we Consider that the Bladesinger is about 20 HP behind the other classes, the other frontliner classes, at level 10. That tells us that we need about four levels of spell slots to even the odds, to, to close that gap. Which, if you think about it, a level 10 full caster has a combined level of spell slots equal to 41, divided between 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th level slots. So, what we're basically giving up is about 10% of our daily spellcasting spell slot levels. Keep that number in mind as we look to level 20. Level 20, we're looking at about 122 HP for the Bladesinger and 164 for those D10 classes, which is, of course, a difference of 42. Now... 42 is a gap that we can close with 8 levels of spell slots with Song of Defense, which sounds like a lot, and in a way is, but if we consider that a 20th level spellcaster, full caster, has a total of 89 levels of spell slots across 1st through ninth level slots, that also gives us a little under 10%, it's about 9% of our total spell slots usage for the day going to Song of Defense to close that gap with those other classes. So it stays at about 10% between level 10 and 20. So what we can gather from this is that if we're willing to, starting at level 10, reserve one-tenth of our spell slot levels be that in a single 4th level slot at level 10, or a 2nd level and 2 1st level slots, or a 3rd and a 1st, and then at higher levels, you know, maybe 2 4th level slots, or a 4th, a 3rd, and a 1st, spread them out a bit, something like that. We can close that gap with the Paladin and Ranger, who have significantly fewer 
and lower level spell slots anyway, and the fighter who doesn't have spell slots. So it's not really any easy way to compare there. But but the, the takeaway from the math is that if we're willing to reserve that amount of spell slots per day, we can be just as tanky, just as defensive as those other D10 classes without having to give up any more than a couple spell slots, without having to have a higher constitution or take the tough feat. And that leaves us with 90% of our spell slots for the day to actually cast spells and do wizardly things, whether that's shield and absorb elements and counterspell. Uh, I do want to touch on counterspell a little bit because part of that decision where you have to weigh Song of Defense versus shield and absorb elements is also going to come into play with counterspell. Counterspell can not only prevent damage to you but also your teammates if it works. So if you do know what spell is coming at you and it's a single target spell that will only affect you or even if it's an AoE but you're the only one in the area, it may be better to guarantee damage reduction by using Song of Defense rather than a chance to negate the damage entirely by countering the spell, or a chance to fail and taking the full damage. That's a tactical decision that you're going to have to make for yourself. Now, paladins and rangers do also have access to some healing magic, which is great, but being able to negate damage in the first place is in some instances better, and in most instances better than using your action in combat to restore HP. A reaction is typically considerably less costly than your full action. I'm going to circle back around to Song of Defense in a minute. First I want to address another very common complaint that I hear, which is that the Bladesinger, as a wizard, is better off casting a spell on their turn than uh, running up and using a weapon to damage somebody. And that hasn't really been my experience either. In many cases. Some situations absolutely cast a spell. Uh, like if you run into a room with a bunch of weak enemies, fireball. Just wipe them all out. But there is certainly something to be said for targeting a specific creature and taking it out quickly. And for the most part, being able to use weapon attacks against that creature means that you're going to deal more damage to that creature than you would with an AoE spell hitting them and their friends. Being able to cast, say, Shadowblade at third level and then follow it up with two attacks per turn at 3d8 plus your dexterity, plus maybe you have the dueling fighting style uh, for multiclassing or the feat, um, plus any other modifiers every single turn, and then at level 14, gaining Song of Victory and adding your Intelligence modifier to that damage as well, once you hit that level, you can get some very respectable single target damage for the cost of only a third level spell slot at the start of a fight, and continue doing that damage every turn. So, a Bladesinger who uses their spell slots efficiently can go through an adventuring day being quite strong and also not burning too many resources. That part is important because we come back to Song of Defense and we know of course that it costs spell slots to use. So the fewer we use dealing damage the more we can use defending ourselves. Of course if we're talking about efficiency we gotta bring up the defensive spells. Things like shield and absorb elements as well as counter spell that are reactions also cost a spell slot albeit in a lot of cases a lower level one and effectively reduce damage a lot of people say well if you're going to use song of defense shouldn't you use shield to just block the attack in its entirety or absorb elements to reduce elemental damage by half for the cost of a first level spell slot instead of a higher level one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously. You should. Song of Defense is for those times where shield and absorb elements don't apply. If you get hit by something that doesn't deal those elemental damage types and 
either doesn't use an attack roll, it uses a saving throw, or uses an attack roll but it's too high for you to shield, or perhaps it's a critical hit and you can't shield it anyway. Being able to use Song of Defense to reduce the damage is better than nothing by a, a country mile. And there are a few instances where it becomes essential. And those are as follows. Some enemies, like a vampire with its bite attack or a lich with its life drain, have riders on their damage rolls that do things like reduce your max HP. So reducing that necrotic damage that you take when a vampire bites you in the neck will also allow you to keep your max HP and also, in that case, prevent the vampire from healing. And this is a very valuable use of... Uh, Probably not that high level spell slot. For reference, it takes a 5th level Greater Restoration spell to restore a creature's maximum HP. So spending, say, a 2nd or 3rd level spell slot to negate that damage in the first place is just going to be better for everybody. Uh, again, it's more efficient to use a 2nd or 3rd level spell slot than a 5th level one. The other instance where Song of Defense is exceedingly useful, uh, I would actually say necessary, is if you're about to be knocked to zero HP, and especially if you're about to be knocked to zero HP by something like Disintegrate, where being brought to zero HP means that you will be turned to dust and die permanently, requiring a true resurrection to come back to life. That's a ninth level spell. So if you're targeted by something like Disintegrate, or uh, Beholder's Disintegrating Eye Beam, or the Immolate spell, even, will turn you to ash if you drop to zero HP. Any of these effects, if it becomes a matter of your life versus a spell slot, even if it's a high-level spell slot, even if it's a ninth-level spell slot, choose the spell slot. Spend that resource, save yourself, and save your party 25,000 gold pieces for that true resurrection. Uh, of course, that's a pretty niche thing. You're not going to be against Disintegrates every day. I hope. If you are, talk to your DM, maybe. Because uh, that would be a lot. But it also applies if you just don't want to go down and you can negate enough damage to not hit 0 HP. If you can stay at... Even if it's only one, even if it's, you know, between one and five. Also important, not about dropping to zero hit points per se, but if you take a strong attack, you'll have to roll a constitution saving throw to maintain concentration on a spell that you're holding on to, of course. The DC is obviously ten or half the damage taken, rounded down. So, if you have a good constitution modifier. For example, my blade singer has a plus 14 to con saves while blade singing. So, if she takes up to 31 damage from a single attack or spell or effect, half of 31 is 15.5, round down to 15, and even with a 1 on the die, plus 14, she succeeds a DC 15 saving throw. So, if I take up to 31 damage, I don't even really have to roll. And the higher your con save bonus, the higher that damage threshold can be pushed. And of course with Song of Defense, we can use spell slots to bring damaging effects that are close to that threshold, but above it, down under it. So for example, if I take 41 damage from an attack, or 40 damage, I can spend a second level spell slot and my reaction to reduce the damage by 10, now I'm only taking 31 damage, and the DC is low enough that I can't fail it. If I'm concentrating on, say, haste, and I really don't want to lose that concentration because that would mean I lose a turn, effectively, then, you know, that's well worth the second level spell slot to me. So there are times where Song of Defense will save your hide, or will save your concentration at the very least. So using it properly and being willing to spend your spell slots on it using the features that your class gives you can make you well protected in combat, I should say. 
able to protect yourself in the moments that you really need it. In summary, the Bladesinger has its share of weaknesses. Every subclass does, every class does. But being just a little bit frugal with your spell slots and using Song of Defense when you need it and when Shield and uh, Absorb Elements don't apply can go a long way to making you successful on the front line as a full caster. And I, I really think the ability is underrated. I really think that it's an important part of the Bladesinger package. And I think it is too often overlooked. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, sort of spur of the moment. So that's, uh, that's all I really have to say about that for now. I'm interested to hear what you guys think in the comments, especially if you've played a Blade Singer. Have you used Song of Defense? Do you use it often? Uh, I want to know if I'm the weird one <laughs> who actually spends spell slots on it. Um, it's worked really well for me in the past. I don't know. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll have something probably a little more structured next week. Uh, probably drop a quick dip video on Saturday here and uh, cause I'm trying to get an actual release schedule going a little more consistency and uh, outros are hard like, comment, subscribe or something <laughs> have, have a good day guys see you in the next one